Peter Jordan on the Lost Angler channel here at the Lost Angler Fly Shop at Delta Marine and Outfitters here in Daphne. Uh, and we're going to be tying today an EP minnow. We're using some pretty cool techniques, some pretty cool materials. And what I want to show you guys is even though these uh, flies look pretty serious, they're actually really easy to tie. And they're really simple to to produce they're extremely tough they're going to last fish after fish and they're going to treat you really well these are some of my absolute go-to patterns so stick around let's get one tied up <clears throat> all right guys so we're starting out with a gamakatsu sc15 this is a 2-0 hook pretty beefy little guy certainly more than enough for just about anything but we do have a lot of bull reds in the area right now, and we also have a lot of jacks. So better be prepared for anything. And you can make this fly as big or as small as you want, depending on what you want to do. It's totally up to you. All right, so starting out, we're going to start with the Sculpta Fly 3D. All right, this is an EP product. And I am going to start out with just a little bit in white down here. We're going to start at the base of the hook and go around. I want to make sure you guys about even. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be trimming a lot of this off. Don't worry if it's not perfect. We'll, we'll get there. All right, we're going to repeat the process yet again. Sometimes this happens with your EP material. Go around the hook with you. Not a big deal. All right, very nice. All right, next up. You can make this any color you want to. Today we're going to be using backcountry. Backcountry is like a lovely kind of rusty olive, but you got some blues in it, which I really like. Doing the same thing again. I want you guys to notice too. So this stuff, when I'm pulling it out, it's really thin. So you notice when we got twisted up, it's about the thickness of a toothpick. So we don't want too much. Less is more. You do have to trim this fly a good bit to get it to do what you want in the water. And just like last time, we're going to take it, tack it in fold it over and I want you guys to notice what I'm doing I'm coming in such a way that I've tying it in on one side and then I'm folding it over to the other side so I'm getting coverage on both sides not a big deal at all really easy to do now we're going to take that white again now the white pieces we're going to do from now on out are going to be a lot shorter we're not needing them to do uh, long strokes I guess you'd say so we're going to take that same piece, nice white, and I love this Sculpta Fly stuff because it is, uh, it already has a lot of really nice flash built into it, so you're not having to take the time to blend flash into your EP fiber, so it makes your tying process a lot faster. So we've just cut that half and half, that's all we've done, nothing fancy, pull it so it's even. Same deal again. We're going to come over on one side, fold it back through to the other, just like so. Very nice. All right, so now we're going to take our back country. We're going to do the same thing. And we're going to be repeating this process. An EP fly is actually a very simple fly to tie. It's a bit repetitive. It's a very durable fly, so you get a lot of fish out of it. So even though, yeah, it is a repetitive fly to tie, it's not a difficult one. And it's one that after you've tied a few, it goes really quick. 
Man, are they deadly. They are deadly. Besides, whoop. Bring it on down. Again. All right, so I'll show you guys something. So I've got the whole hank right here, right? I've got the whole thing out of the package, and the way I get it out is I pinch what I want off, okay? Pull my fingers through, and then pull off what I want. And that way the rest of it stays as part of that hank. See? It's going to make it a lot easier to take care of later. All right. Now, just how we started cutting those halves in half, we're going to start doing the same thing for the back country. So I got my half, cut it in half. Because we got the length we want out of it now. Now we're just getting that good profile and that really good shape out of it. That's all we need. And don't worry if it's not looking perfect right now, guys. Because we're going to trim it out, we're going to brush it out, and it's going to come out looking beautifully. We're only going to do this a couple more times. All right. And you can pre-cut a lot of this stuff. So if you're going to cut a few of these, or excuse me, tie a few of these, you can go ahead and pre-cut your uh, EP fibers to what you need. So you're just lifting it up, tying it on. All right, last piece of our back country. Off to the races. All right, last piece of back country. <clears throat> I like that. Nice quick fly. Comes together really well. Great shape. Nothing to it. All right, now what we're going to do in this next step is we're going to add in some what I call the throat. Okay? So let me grab that throat material. We'll fly over. And I'm going to use pink ice dub. This stuff's pretty short. What we want to do is we want to take it and pull it so everybody's got the same sort of length. So just kind of pull it apart in your fingers. Kind of stack it up. Now we're going to come right here to that throat area. Take it, bring it over. We're going to do the same thing again. All right, cool beans. Next, we're going to be using three inch sparkle brush to make the head. And I really love using this sparkle brush material because it gives just a, just a great pop of flash. You can use any brush you want. Uh, you could use a minute head brush, streamer brush, just whatever. It's up to you. I am, however, going to be using the sparkle brush. I think it's just extremely cool. All right, so what we've got right here is you see how I've got this wire, okay? I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to go up. I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to bring it back down. There we go. Now, we're going to take this and we're going to polymer it on. Okay, what we want to do is when we're putting it on, we want to take these fibers and we want to pull them back. Okay, pull them back out of the way. So as we're wrapping it, we're not trapping the materials. So we're getting full credit for these materials. That's what we're doing. We're just taking it, pulling it back, wrapping it up. 
here, pull it back, wrap it up. Pull it back, wrap it up. Not too benign. Pull it back, wrap it up. You guys get the idea. Okay. This is a great time to use the rotary feature on your vise. But considering not everybody has the rotary vise, some of you guys may be just starting out. I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. Take it, pull it back. Take it, pull it back. All right, so there you go. Super nice. I'm just going to keep on coming back. All right. We're going forward. I'm advancing it forward, actually. You guys get the idea. All right. And now I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room from the eye, okay, so that I can add a weed guard to it. What I like about a weed guard is I'm just showing you guys how to do it is that if I'm throwing it around dock lights or something, or in heavier cover, it can kind of help maybe get me where I'm not making a mess of things. And I'm not having to go in and retrieve a fly, basically. Um, and if you think, okay, well this, I'm, I'm missing some strikes because of the weed guard, that's totally cool. You can 100% cut that weed guard off. So that's something that's really nice about it. All right, now we're going to take it. We're going to clip it off. We don't want to use our good, good tying scissors like these razor scissors I'm using on this wire. I'm just ruining them. Let's be careful not to cut our thread. And these are just some titanium uh, Westcott scissors that uh, I got. So. Uh, what I would say is I personally probably get about two flies from each brush, in my experience. So they come in a pack of six, so you get about a dozen flies, a dozen good size flies. So I think that's a real good bargain. Now we're going to take it and we're going to comb it out. Comb the whole fly out. It's going to blend everybody together, keep it looking real nice. And by itself, at this point, you actually have a pretty decent looking fly, that's for sure. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the fly out of the vise after I tie it off. And I'm going to show you guys what I do when I trim it up. I hope you guys find it helpful. Um, I've tried uh, trimming these flies in the vise. And it's just not a great experience. So I'm going to show you guys what I've found is the fastest, easiest way to trim these flies up. Just like always, finishing off the two double half hitches because I'm a loser. All right, bingo. You can loon it off, but we're not going to worry about it right now. So let me show you guys how we get down. All right. So I'm going to take it out of the vise. Alrighty. First thing I want to do is, what I'm going to do, can I do that? Oh, yeah, that looks good. All right, cool. Let me turn my vise out of the way. Uh, this is obviously a peak rotary vise, but one of my favorite features, and I, I tell people all the time, this is one of my favorite parts, is this little catch-all bin right here, man. I tell you what, it makes a huge difference. It makes life so much easier. I love the tool caddies. Uh, we're a peak dealer here at the store, and I, I couldn't be happier with them. They just make wonderful tools. All right, so I'm going to go over. I've been using 4-inch razor scissors. Now I'm going to come over here to a 5-inch razor scissor. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm taking it now, and I'm just going to go going uh, straight to the bottom of where that hook is. So now I've got the first basic cut in. Now I'm going to come to the top, and 
and we'll basically do the same thing over there. Now don't be afraid to trim away too much. You'll be surprised. This stuff seems to go on forever. All right. Now see how I just cut in front of the hook? Like this, this opened it up. I want that hook to be readily visible. So for a couple reasons, if you try to hide that hook in the material, what very often happens is that when you strip the fly really fast, what ends up happening is the fly is going to turn on its side when it tries to swim forward. We don't want to do that. We want to stay nice and true. And lay it on the side. Trim it out. So we're starting to develop that good shape. During the process, I think it's nice and important to come in and brush it out. I'll lay it on my leg, brush it out like that, and that gets all my fibers to where it really is because we've been stroking it back and pulling it back, so we don't really have a great feel for it just yet. So you see how we've got kind of this bulges on the side? We don't want to do that. So we want to get that down. We want to trim everybody nice and uniform. The basic construction of the fly never takes very long. It's getting everybody trimmed out the way you want it. That's what takes the actual time. All right, now we're going to come right here. Try to shape that bottom. Now, I want to stress this. You want the fly to kind of come up this angle. That's another thing that's going to help you keep a fly that's going to swim true. And also, too, when we're putting our eyes on later, this is going to squeeze down. Okay. Really close to having that overall profile we're on. Take it again at this point and brush it out.
All right, so now what we want to do is now that we've got that, that really nice basic profile in the fly, what we want to do at this point is we want to throw those eyes on there because that's going to change the basic shape of the fly when we press it in. So we want to make sure that we're getting the right overall look because right now, as we're trimming, we're kind of trimming blind. So let's get this guy set up. Put on some eyeballs. At this point, I definitely like to put it back in the vise. We lot rock in the uh, black and red pupil. This is the five sixteenth from EP. Great looking set of eyes. Great looking set of eyes. Great, let's see if we can ever get them out of the pack. They're not that they're hard to get out of the pack, just that I have a hard time doing anything because that's who I am as a person. All right, these things are sticky, man. They are sticky, 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 which is great. So we're going to come right here. I'm going to set it right here. Ooh. Yes, sir. I love the fact that they're sticky so I can place them on the fly and be like, and try to figure out where I like their placement at. Because I can put them on there, second guess myself, try them on again, and it can change the entire look of the fly depending on where we place them at. What I'm doing now is I'm taking this bodkin and just pulling out my sparkle brush. All right, so we got it placed on this side. Very pleased with it. And this guy, so it's a little bit easier for me to deal with over here. Very nice. Okay, cool. So now that I've got this guy on there, what I actually want to do now is I'm going to take UV Thin from Loon. Because I've super glued him down. I've done all kinds of stuff with it. And at the end of the day, you get a big fish, he's just going to annihilate these things off. So what I'm doing is I'm coating it with some uh, UV. Not the whole thing. What I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to give it something that's really going to set it in place. You might say, okay, well, why not use the thick for that? And the reason I'm not using the thick is because I'm putting it over the eye as well. And I don't want that eye to sit out super duper far. Notice I'm pulling the fibers back. And grabbing my light. Ugh, getting the good stretches in today. And letting it get in position. All 
And that's going to help hold these eyes on fish after fish after fish after fish after fish after fish after fish, which is what we want. Usually about 15, 20 seconds is all you need. Ooh, very nice. You guys can see it's already changed the look of it. You might really like that eye placement, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. We'll take our thin. Add a judicious amount. Hold it in that place. And you see when we did this, it changed the overall shape of the fly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it coming up just a little bit over the top. And that overall fly just a little bit. So now, last but not least, we're going to add that weed guard like we talked about. The weed guard for me is going to be Mason's Hard Nylon. You can use whatever you like. I like the Mason's Hard Nylon because it lets me use a small diameter to hold, uh, to do the job. So this is a 20 pound uh, hard nylon. It holds its shape really, really well. You've seen me use it on other flies and other videos big fan yes we 100% sell it here at the store so got you covered all right of course maybe me I made a mess so all right again don't use your nice scissors for that Good to go. Bam. You got our masons. You got a couple different ways you can do it. You can just tie it straight down and then cut it off, or you can put it through the eye, like so, and then burn it out. We're going to go through the eye because it's already going to start it in the general direction that I want to be in. Beautiful. Go through the eye. back all right super nice just nice and clean
Now we're going to go back with that thin loon again. Now be careful guys. Do not get this stuff into the eye of the hook. I cannot begin to say how stupid tough this loon is. Man, I tell you what. If it gets in the eye of that hook, you ain't never. Yeah, we're gonna get that uh that mason's burned out of there. It's just it, it's not gonna happen. Cure it on up. When you get out of the vise, you can finish trimming it up if you feel like there's any more trimming needs to be done. All right. Awesome. Cured up real nice. Now, let's get this guy heated up. Burn it out. Wind resistant lighter for lighting of barbecue grills on the most inclement days. Got it red hot. Pull it through. Boom. That's all there is to it. Now, take it, trim it. Boom. Nice little weed guard. It's not enough to stop a strike, but if you're on a dock or something, you're not going to get messed up. Now, Last but not least, I'm going to finish trimming it up just a little bit now that i got the eyes on it, uh, get it out of the vise, and I'm going to show you guys what I like to do to color these guys up. So, talking about the uh, coloring them up, I'm just using thick Sharpie marker. Um, you know, any Sharpie marker, style marker will work fine. As you can see, I uh, took the fly off the vise, did a little extra trimming, helped shape it up a little bit more. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these fibers back, I'm just kind of giving it some color over the top because what I'm wanting to do is bait fisher in general going to be a little bit darker over the top than they are say you know throughout the rest of the body so what I did is I hit it with this is honey brown kind of a light orangey brown and then I'm going to come back over it just in the very center top with an ordinary dark brown. As you can see, I'm not doing very much at all with that. And boom. There you go. Now you can definitely color up the white with this. You can give it whatever kind of coloration you want. I personally really like that simple, simple little deal. Uh, hopefully I've tied in the right stuff in the meantime. Then when I get done, I kind of brush it through to make sure that I've come up with what I like. Boom, there you go. Now, one thing I do want to suggest is, guys, before you start um, coloring up your fly that you've tied, take a scrap piece and just try the different colors. So you can see why I tried different colors, see what I liked to make sure this is going to be agreeable. I normally use Sharpies, but hey, I, had a little, I uh, found these online on Amazon. For a great price. So let's say you don't want to add in your throat here and you just want to color it in with a red Sharpie. Totally easy to do. Uh, let's say you're fishing somewhere that's got a, a nice bluegill population or whatever and you want to take some orange and do -do -do -do, hit some orange stripes on there. Great thing to do. Another really good option. So just remember these flies are extremely versatile. They're very tough. They're actually really easy to tie. They're much easier to trim when you're not trying to do it on camera. 
but I definitely suggest you guys try them out. Uh, this is again tied on a 2.0. This is a pretty big uh, EP for me. I like the smaller sizes a lot, but this is definitely, you can see this probably the best on camera. So I hope you guys liked it and I hope it helps. You guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw today, remember to hit the like button. Remember to subscribe, share this with your friends, and I uh, hope we see you at the shop. Again, we're in Daphne, Alabama. We're at uh, the Lost Angler Fly Shop in, is inside of Delta Marine and Outfitters, and uh, we've got all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, we've got a crazy cool tying selection, great rod selection, just tons of great stuff. So anyway, hope you'll come see us here in Daphne, Alabama. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and just like always, guys, see you on the water.